In regards to why I care about refugees, I think let's not label them as just that, they're people. We have a duty to our fellow human beings to share the love and compassion which we share with those in our immediate life. You cannot pick and choose where you support human rights and where you don't. These are principles that must remain principles and remain consistent. I am an old Sudanese. We were hoping a freedom, a democratic government. However, if you see now, we just hope safe food and water. So the situation is changed from bad to worse. I feel like heartbreaking. I feel like we're losing hope. Because when I came here, like I was thought like one day I will go back to my country. But what I, I have seen is horrific. And now it's in the capital of Sudan. So I don't think so. They are going like to make it safe. The new flagship asylum bill of the government is its, its latest piece of legislation. And what this bill does is something which is quite extraordinary. It's a watershed moment because what it effectively will do is that it will ban any individual who's had to flee for their lives, had to take a dangerous journey, get to the UK by any means they've been able to. It will effectively ban them from being able to have their case heard in the UK so they could go on to stay here as a refugee, like many, many people have done over a number of generations. It is slamming our door in their face. It will firstly allow the government to put those children in detention, to lock them up uh, in prison-like conditions, and then to hold them there until they turn 18, they become an adult, and then when they're adults, it allows the government to kick them out. Imagine coming here by yourself, you have no understanding of what's going on. They're often deeply traumatised. Children arrive by, them, by themselves, sometimes with physical injuries. The idea that these are children who have come to this country and been taken to a processing facility and just usually through a quick visual check have been told that they are dishonest about their age or that they are an adult rather than a child, whilst their age is being overturned, are put into adult facilities. It's scary, there are a huge risk of abuse, exploitation. I think anyone who has children, the thought of that being their child alone should demand that the government puts into legislation far safer and better routes of assessment on someone's age. What international human rights treaties do and what the UN Convention on Refugees does is says we are a global world and as a consequence when global citizens, our fellow humans suffer, we will stretch out a hand to them and we will give them a welcome if they are refugees and they are fleeing for their lives. This bill effectively says we're going to rip that up and we're not interested as a country in being part of a global community that looks after the whole of humanity. The way they're now coming is on boats across the channel because as a consequence of, of means of arrival changing. Previously it was much more in the back of lorries, now it's on boats and those boats are really visceral, very powerful images and for this government they've decided to use that and to ramp up the narrative against people that are coming here as refugees and you want to come to the UK because you might even have distant relatives here or you might know other people in the UK. There's no way of you being able to get here safely. There aren't the safe routes. When I left my country, I have no idea like what I'm going to face. Because if I, if I knew, I will not like choose this way, absolutely. My whole journey it was horrific and deadly journey. Everywhere we moved, like there someone would die. And I, I was trying to across the sea, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea between uh, Libya and uh, Europe, and it was horrible journey also. Like, I experienced some situation, like I haven't been through it in, in all my life. 
because I was traveling for three years. So I haven't got a place, like warm place, a safe place to get in, in all these three years. The Rwanda plan, which has sometimes actually been misunderstood, would mean that someone would come here, they wouldn't be able to apply for asylum and have their asylum case heard in the UK. Instead, they would be thrown on a plane and sent to Rwanda. And the Rwandan authorities would decide whether they were going to allow them to stay in Rwanda or not. They would be forced against their will, in fact, onto a plane and sent to Rwanda, whether they like it or not. It's a plan which actually the UN Convention says to be inhumane. It breaks so many different humanitarian laws. Rwanda plan. Rwanda plan is unrealistic, really. Yeah, it's horrific. Especially, like, from if, if this happened from the UK, because UK has got a good reputation about humanity, a good reputation about freedom. So if this happened from them, they just destroyed all this reputation that they has got it. And I think this one just from government, not from British people. I think it's disappointing. And they just like demonize people for doing nothing. And if they knew that like we have been through, I think they will change their mind. I think people look at journalists as such and we relate to them more as human beings than politicians. And I think it's such a serious and heavy, I guess, speech to be putting forward to support those kind of bills. And you, it's very often that you hear these negative kind of stories, but you don't ever actually hear the stories of these people who are human beings and individuals just like any of us and have just experienced immense suffering. And I think it's profoundly shocking and awful. They will never understand our situation because an idiom said like, you will not feel situations that you haven't been through. You just imagine that situation, but you will not feel it, real feeling. So they haven't been through this situation. They from cars to cars, from doors to doors. So they haven't been through our situation. And unfortunately, some people, they, like, they follow this rule. Like, if the body is not your body, why you do, why you do care of it? So they don't care, maybe. We live in the UK. We are immensely privileged in the fact that we have a voice. Your voice and your privilege shouldn't be taken lightly. You need to speak up for people that can't speak up for themselves. Always see what has been described as the face behind the case. It would then mean that some very practical, important things would be in place, that they would have access to legal advice if they needed it, that they would be accommodated in the community that the decision on their case would not drag on for months and years on end leaving them in limbo having to live on just a few pounds a day that actually the decision on their case would be taken in a timely fashion and if they had to wait longer than six months they would be allowed to work they would be allowed to stand on their own two feet it would also be a system that allows people to have their needs met so that they can access support if they're deeply traumatised, they can get the help that they need if they have a medical condition and that doesn't force them into destitution which often happens to people because they're unable to survive and cope. The government need to treat fellow human beings as fellow human beings. They focus so hard on, um, I guess, neglecting and stopping people from coming to this country and I think there could be so much more time, energy, investment in the incredible things that those people have to offer, you know, and to be able to champion those people's skills and positivity that they bring to this country rather than this negative rhetoric that continues. Why we don't offer to asylum seekers or refugees like opportunity to study? Because they, they didn't come here like just for entertainment because they, hadn't, they haven't got a choice 
to stay to their country so they come here. So why we don't help them to get back to education? Because if you go to the job center, the whole thing that they speak about, just getting job, getting job, getting job. Why they don't speak about education? So I really want, as I want from government like to help asylum seekers to get in education. Because if we get asylum seeker in education, he will help himself and he will help the community. There's many refugees that have come to the UK over many, many generations. They were at the front line of the NHS keeping us safe from COVID. When one of my own children was in hospital a year ago, the doctor that treated him came here as a child refugee from Iraq with his father. His father was a doctor in the NHS and then he is a consultant in here. So the contribution is incredible and I believe that that enriches our society.